This is a Red Ring Expressions 570 shower. I've uh, been using it for about 10 years and I absolutely hate it and I've swapped it out for a better shower. I just swapped it out for a Triton. But I'll tell you why I hate it. Um, and I'll try and explain how it works inside as well. It fits on the wall, it's got the shower hose comes out here, power and water come in from behind. It's held on on the bottom and the top with the screw each end. You take them out, you get inside and here's what's inside. So. That's the boiler, or the heater unit, that's the pump. So water would come in here, in a pipe, and go into this thing, and this elbow, and in here to this pump. And the pump is driven by the motor. And the water gets pumped out here, through here, and up into the boiler, and then back down to the shower head. And it really is as simple as that. On the front, we've got two controls. We've got high power and low power. So that drives this switch here, which drives this micro switch here. And what it does is it either drives one or two elements up on top, I think. I think. But it's simple enough. And down here, you've got the stop, 10987654321, uh, temperature dial. So what it does is it drives this knob here. So if, if it's set at 10 now, the micro switch is pushed out and in the off position. If you turn it around, which might be difficult to do without the knob, it clicks. Let's try and get a picture on that. That's off with the micro switch here, little black tab sticking out. You turn it around to 10, click, and all the way around the power comes on. And what this does is it regulates the flow. So it starts off by turning it on, and then it regulates the flow through the pump. So more flow means cooler water. It's very, very simple. That's how electric power showers work. So power comes in, goes through a series of switches and whatnot, and really, it's, it's very basic. But why I hate it is because of this switch thing here. So it's on now. Bring it around. And so we're going to turn it off. We're in a shower, we're having a shower, we're going to turn it off. Bring it around. But you don't bring it to here to stop it. You bring it up to stop on the dial, which is more like here, or here, and it's a bit ambiguous. And so what happens is, people who haven't used this shower before, turn it back to stop, and it doesn't, uh, they don't turn it off properly. They don't bring it all the way to here, because that's not where it goes to. You bring it up to about 10, and the water stops flowing, because the flow, in this thing here, stops the water flowing through the, through the boiler. But the element, which is regulated by this thing, is still on. So the shower's still on. So, the boiler's still on. And up here on top, you've got a thermal cutout. And you can see it's held on with one screw, that little white bit in there at the end of my thumb, and another screw that's completely sheared off here, because we've taken this apart so many times to reset it, because it, it boils over and overheats. So what you do is, I'll, I'll, I'll take this apart now, you take this uh, thermostat off and you reset the tab inside and it's got a bimetal, a bimetal, or bimetal if you pronounce it that way, button inside. And you have to take the cover off, you have to isolate the power, which is coming in here and it's got a, you know, that's about a 4mm cable and it's got a 6mm cable coming into it and you got to isolate that and you're working with this heavy electricity, you've isolated it on the switch and all but still, to do this, it's a, it's a really a five minute job, but you shouldn't have to do that. So, I wonder can I see that from above better? This is the thermal cutout. Those are the connectors for the two elements there. So, to get this off, you've got to get a spanner on this mounting post here, which is just, it's, it doesn't have any electricity flowing through it, it's just earthed. Um, you gotta get that off, and there's one over on this side, which you can see has sheared off in there because we've done it so many times. So let's try and get that unscrewed. So it takes a 7mm spanner, and you just unscrew it. You gotta completely unscrew it, but you don't wanna take the cables off, of course, because the cables come off. You gotta put them all back on again. So you can do it by just unscrewing this one and there will be another one here. And remember, you're standing in a bath or a shower. 
you put the plug in because these little nuts and bolts go everywhere. I'm never putting this back together, so unscrew that nut there. You can see it coming off. If it would just come off. You pull this off, and here there's this bimetal strip. And if it is overheated, it will have popped out, and you have to just push it back in, snap. It goes snap once it's all cooled down and cooled off. At this point, you haven't had a shower, and you're angry. And then you put it all back together again, and you wait for it to happen again, because it happens all the bloody time. It's a Triton, or not a Triton, a Red Ring Expressions 570. Pretty diabolical machine. So I've started taking it apart, and I'll keep going, just if anybody wants to watch this video a bit further. That's why I hate I hate it, but let's have a look. The quality of construction is pretty useless. Um, the components are just not, you know, they're kind of rough plastic. It's not kind of rubbishy stuff. Nothing, nothing really good about it. I really, have, I really have very little good to say about this, about this machine. But uh, I'll set up a tripod and make a quick video of the rest of it coming apart. So the Red Ring Expressions 570. Pumped electric shower. What else can I take apart? It's a micro switch that turns it on and uh, turns on high and low power. It's the micro switch that regulates element on off over here. Try and take that off. That's the cover for the water pump. The water flow regulator, that's the water pump. So it's holding that on two more screws. You know, in an electric shower, you've got 220 volt electricity, a motor that's completely open, really, with electrical contacts, with brushes in there. You've got water coming in here, everything's sealed, and it's fine. Except, you've got water right beside 220 volt electricity, and you're standing naked in a shower, completely soaked. It doesn't, doesn't seem safe, it doesn't seem okay, but apparently it is. There's a micro switch I can reuse sometime. Some heavy cables. So, what's holding this on? What's holding itself together? This one here. The screw that holds the inlet elbow. The idea with this is you can swivel this inlet around 90 degrees so you can have bottom entry or top entry and this was a top entry shower. So here is the motor. I'm going to disconnect this. It's earthed. I've got some water coming out of it because they are pretty difficult to drain down. Another micro switch. Just a little micro switch. Connector block there. Here's your neutral bus connector. There's that thermal cutout, which I should burn in hot, hot heat. holding this in there's a clip on each side of this imagine this white strips holding it on can't quite see how it goes together since I'm not too fussed about it there's some kind of a shield Oh, 
screws on the back holding it on. There's another set pair of micro switches here as well. I didn't watch for what they were doing. So, I don't know. You just rotate off like that. More micro switches. How does this come off? There, if you, it clips off into it, just snaps in. So you use a screwdriver and you break it off. I guess, actually, maybe if you pull those together with the nippers, let's try that. Might be helpful to somebody. If you get the nippers in there, no, that's not doing it. Okay. Just pull it out with brute force, it comes out. And there's the element unit. Here's the element cables on top. Let's get them cut off. So that's the neutral bus on the element. These are the two lives, high and low. And those are the mounting pillars. One's broken off there. Ooh, should show you that. That's the neutral bus mounting pillars for the two or the, the two connectors for the high and low live. I don't know which way around they are. And those were two pillars for mounting the thermal cutout. That's what it looks like. It's a shower element and a pump unit and it's got some kind of a valve on there as well i don't know what that does not sure it's leaking out water on me let's open this up and have a look inside of this valve flow regulator maybe it's called or something like that It's just not big. Oh, it's just big enough. Whoa! Full of water. What does the element look like inside? Well, that's it. It's just a kettle. Basically, it's just two kettle elements in a copper tub. A plastic bottom on the bottom. Jeez, it just seems like it was just uh, popped in place with not much holding it, which is a bit scary. A little bit scary. So the water has to come in underneath that baffle plate and come out to the top. So it gets heated by passing past all these elements that are really, really hot. So what's this little valve? And this was driving a micro switch or two micro switches. So I guess this is another kind of a, maybe this is the low flow cutoff, which doesn't seem to kick in for some reason. Maybe this was broken. It does, it does seem to have softness in it, which should kick in, I guess, when there's low flow, if that's what it is. A lot of showers tend to have them, and I guess that would indicate that the motor had died or something like that. Um, it's just a diaphragm, a little pressure, a little hole there, so it is, I guess that's a low flow sensor or something like that. How do we get this off? There's a circlip on there. Wow, that could have taken my eye out. We're still alive. There it is. Somehow, this thing regulates the flow. So that's uh, got a little wheel on it. It's got a rubber rubber pad. Let's see, where's it seat seating in? It's seating in this. Got an O-ring. Some kind of a seat. Another O-ring. Water's coming in here and going out this hole at the top, which is very small, really. Like that's your full flow in the shower. That little tiny pinhole, well, pinhole, four mil, five mil hole. So I guess this thing here is baffling the water flowing through it. Now, what, is, what would that be doing? If we grab this, and twist it. it, doesn't seem to be changing anything. Oh, it does. So if we pull that out, 
that would be winding it back to the lowest temperature setting, this is retracted. And if we wind it up to the highest temperature setting, you can see that this white bit here is emerging from the casing. It's come the whole way out now. And there's a little there's a screw thread inside that that's acting on. So all it does is, it's just the tap, basically, that's slowing the water down before it gets up to the element. Um, the pump on this end, let's take this pump apart, see what this is like. So there's an electric motor here, which does work and may be useful for something else. It may be useful as a pump, so maybe I don't want to wreck this. So let's take off these six screws that go all the way around. Let's drain that off and get this table, I'll get the workbench clear first. So as if by magic, the workbench is tidied up. Now, that's the view of the bottom of the pump, so that's the inlet, and that's the outlet. So it's just a plastic fitting with an O-ring. And in here, there should be some kind of a blade or something. Yeah, that's it. So the water comes in at the center, at the bottom, through this, this hole here. And it gets pulled through this little impeller blade and, and forced out around the outside and up out here. Pretty simple. I'll put that back together. So it has to line up the right way. Um, and to talk about the motor, it has a name on it there I'd say. Yeah, 220 volt, class F, don't know what that means. 904, so it's 12 years old, September 20, 2004. Should be turned up this way. Something tech, bin tech. Can't see what that means. Can't see what it says. Motor works. It's got carbon brushes in it each side. Might be useful for something. I'll keep that as a pump. Let's have a look at this thing here. Red ring. Expression 570. This is a rubbish shower. Do not buy this shower. 